Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Halstead. I'm the state veterinarian for Michigan, and with me here is Buddy, my 14-year-old Arabian gelding, and, and uh, beside him is Cal, who's 24 years old. Well, this time of year, we always need to advise horse owners, remind them that there are several diseases that can be of serious impact to their horses and potentially themselves, and for which we have good vaccines. So those diseases specifically are Eastern Equine Encephalitis, West Nile Virus, and Rabies. And then another disease that we don't have a vaccine for, but it's very important to consider, and, and that is equine infectious anemia. And the reason we need to consider that is that they can be life-threatening to the horses and have the potential to impact humans as well. These illnesses are transmitted to horses by a variety of means. The, the ones that uh, we can do the most about are those that are transmitted by biting insects. So mosquitoes, biting flies, and you'll see Buddy here fidget a little bit because the flies are out this time of year and, and he's responding to them. And for rabies, we, we have concerns about contact with other rabies vectors. Rabies is a disease that can affect any mammal, and it's mammals that are also the carriers for those diseases. So it's primarily, when it concerns horses, skunks, but it can also be bats, and it can be raccoons, or it could be fox, or coyotes, or other mammals. So protecting the horse involves preventing those animals from having contact with the horse, but also making sure that the horses are vaccinated against rabies. Well, there's a broad range, actually, but what we, what we recommend all horses be covered with are tetanus, uh, anti-tetanus vaccine, tetanus toxoid, rabies vaccine, the encephalitis, encephalitis vaccine, so eastern equine encephalitis and western, they're usually combined, West Nile virus, which I mentioned, and, and then there are others that are recommended, and it depends on the use of the horse. Uh, those include Potomac horse fever and uh, potentially rhinopneumonitis. And one additional one that's usually packaged in the combination with the, the encephalitis vaccines is influenza, and that's always good to give as well. well horse owners can find a veterinarian through several sources. The first that I usually recommend is going to the Yellow Pages and looking at, at local listings, and that can be either online or, or the old-fashioned paper version. Another option is to go to the Michigan Veterinary Medical Association's uh, office, either by a direct telephone call or through the website, and the phone office or the office uh, phone number is 517-347-4710 or at mishvma.org, and that's M-I-C-H-V-M-A. Uh, another option is the American Association of Equine Practitioners, the uh, the organization that represents all equine veterinarians in the country, and uh, they have a listing on their website that can help guide a veterinar or an owner to a veterinarian. The cost is going to be uh, dependent on the distance the veterinarian has to travel and the services that you're asking for, and can range. Uh, the vaccines themselves are very inexpensive, and when you consider the value of the horse, the cost is is uh, inconsequential really to to the both the dollar value and the emotional value that we have with our horses. But there will be, of course, a cost to cover the business uh, uh, of the veterinarian having to make the trip and administer the products and, and store the products and all the things that are associated. A typical veterinary visit for spring vaccinations that most horse owners will, will have can range from $50 to $100, maybe a little bit more, depending on what additional vaccines or services the veterinarian might provide. There are additional steps that horse owners might, well, should really consider. In addition to vaccination, since some of these diseases can also affect people, and there aren't vaccines available for people, eliminating mosquito habitat around the farm will help protect against the encephalitis diseases, eastern equine encephalitis and West Nile virus, which both can cause disease in humans. So the things that folks, uh, horse owners, should do is everything they can to eliminate mosquito habitat around their, their farms and their properties. So eliminating all standing water, if they have open water sources for the horses, draining those water containers at least once a week so the mosquitoes don't have a chance to develop, clearing brush from around the buildings, 
adult mosquitoes rest during the day in, in brushy, dense uh, uh, areas where, where there's vegetation. And then when it's mosquito feeding time, which is typically dusk and dawn, keep the horses inside if possible, and even further, if they can be kept under fans so that the air is, is moving, the mosquitoes will have a difficult time getting to the horses and, and uh, it serves as an additional protection. So lots of things that can be done, uh, simple things, but important. For, for further information, much detail on these diseases and others related to livestock and companion animal health, the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development's Emerging Diseases website is a great resource. Uh, that is michigan.gov slash emerging diseases.